coming up on the Q30 newscast. A look into the new visitor's ban in the Ledges building, along with an update on the South Quad construction. And a look at how to register for special voting in Hamden, and another new dispensary. Plus, a look at how to prevent deer accidents across Connecticut. All that and more on the Q30 newscast. officially 9.30 on Wednesday night. Welcome to the Q30 Newscast. I'm Maeve Campbell. And I'm Vanessa Blasey. I'm so excited for the show tonight. Welcome to the desk for the first time, Maeve. Thank you. Of course, tonight we have everything from an update on campus construction to local fall festivities. But starting off tonight, alleged vandalism problems are forcing some first-year students to adopt new dorm rules. And the university has taken action. Q30's Casey Nadelka has the story. From broken ceiling tiles to vomit in the bathrooms, residents in the Ledger's dorm have seen severe vandalism since the beginning of the fall semester. These damages have prompted Quinnipiac's residential life to enact major restrictions for residents and non-residents entering the building. And it came a point where uh, we had to say enough is enough with, with this, uh, and then that's where the restriction for guests came into place. According to an email sent to students from residential life on October 19th, all non-building residents, with the exception of students' parents, are prohibited from entering the dorm until November 2nd. Ledger's residents have reported numerous instances of vandalism in the bathrooms, showers, and stalls. Residential life has also obtained text from Ledger's resident assistants, showing raw eggs thrown at walls and doors being spit on. These conditions are extremely upsetting to students who want to see an end to the damages and who empathize with the facilities workers who have to clean their peers' negligence. The cleaning crew has to spend extra time. They have to steam clean parts of the bathrooms. It's not fair to them. Residential Life may implement communal billing for residents of the ledgers to pay for damage as repair costs are well into the thousands. It's unfair because they know what floors it's occurring on and they're still kind of generalizing it to the whole building when mo the majority of us are not part of it. The, these are not things that we really want to do, um, but I think that we're getting to the point where we might have to take different actions. Last night, Residential Life announced that there was a new anonymous tip line for students to use to report any witness vandalism. By texting the number on screen or through the Rave Guardian app, students can submit photos and videos of destruction, as well as messaging in to report those causing it. Students are hopeful that this tip line will help catch the vandals responsible. Until then, the Ledger's residence hall is off limits to non-residents. Reporting from outside the Ledger's, Casey Nadelka, Q30 News. The town is getting ready for the municipal election in November. The Register of Voters Office is holding a special voter registration session next Tuesday. This session will allow residents to sign up to vote. The deadline to register is October 31st at midnight. Plus, this year Election Day falls on Tuesday, November 7th. The town will be offering their services from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. next Tuesday. Another cannabis shop may be coming to Hamden, and this one is even closer to campus. Hire Collective, a cannabis organization, submitted an application for a retail cannabis shop to replace P&M Fine Foods. P&M is located on Whitney Avenue and is currently an Italian deli. The deli is only six minutes away from campus. There is a public hearing on the matter on Tuesday night, but the decision isn't expected to be made until November 14th. Plus, the colder weather means Halloween is right around the corner and the university plans to celebrate. This year, Boomer's Boo Bash is coming back to campus on Saturday. This free Halloween-themed event is open to the public. There will be food trucks, bouncy houses, trick-or-treating, and plenty more. Plus, a paper shredding company will be joining the fun to offer free document shredding from 9 a.m. to noon. The university will also be taking donations for the Hampton Food Bank. And of course, Halloween costumes are encouraged. Along with these Halloween activities filling up campus, the construction is still underway. The project is expected to be done next year. Q30's Connor Core gives us the latest update on their progress so far. Connor? This view of the Sleeping Giant, along with many more, can be seen from the South Quad buildings. The residential halls are 90% closed in, while the skeletons of the academic building and School of Business have been erected. Two of the newer features of the two buildings are auditorium spaces to complement the current auditorium on Mount Carmel that has a little bit of a twist. They both have retractable seating to a point so they can be uh, used for larger venues for floor space. So for example, I think we can fit 350 on the floor 
in the auditorium and probably 125 or so on the floor in the school building. With the residential hall moving more rapidly than the other two buildings, conversations have begun about who may be living in there in the upcoming years, but not only new members to campus. We think there's a great opportunity for some peer um, involvement from an upper class student standpoint. Again, As the University of the Future, Quinnipiac takes a lot of things into account, not only the physical shape of the buildings, but also the things that may not show up on paper, a sense of community. It feels much more close-knit than some of the other dorms here. Um, and I think the singles and doubles aspect will really push students to get out of their dorms, out of their own room and utilize those study areas rather than being in a suite where you just sit in your common area or a quad where you just sit there and you have three suite mates so you don't need to go out, you don't need to talk with anyone else, but having a single and an amazing common area, you're going to want to get out of there and go sit there and talk with people. So. Now, as of today, the residential buildings is expected to be done on time in August of 2024, as well as the school of business to my left and the academic building to my right are expected to be done in May of 2025. Reporting from the South Quad for Q30 News, I'm Connor Core. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This month, Quinnipiac Athletics, along with student-athlete organizations like QCOR and SAAC, have been raising money for a local cancer fund called Play for K. Play for K aims to support members of the community affected by breast cancer. On October 29th at 1 p.m. at the Quinnipiac Women's Volleyball Game, students can come and show their support. And speaking of October, the month is almost coming to an end. This is our last show of October. That's right, and we'll have everything you'll need to know about next month's Thanksgiving break and a new yearly data report right after this short break. But before you go, we have Keith Savage to give us a weather sneak peek. Keith, please tell me warm weather is in our future. Luckily, Maeve and Vanessa, there are some warm weather coming up these next few days. Tomorrow, it's going to be sunny, 73. Friday, 72. A little cloudy, but overall, it's going to be a great weather day for the weekend. Going into the weekend, excuse me, but now, we got to check out more of the seven-day forecast after this commercial break. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Thanks for sticking with us. You've heard it before. Distracted drivers are a huge risk on the road. But experts are saying that this isn't the only thing that Connecticut drivers need to look out for during this time of year. Q30's Ava Crossley has more on what to know about an increase in deer crashes throughout the state. Ava? Drivers in Connecticut are being warned to stay extra vigilant as the number of deer crashes in the state increases, according to Northeast AAA. The American Automotive Association's analysis of the University of Connecticut's crash data depository shows that deer crash rates rose to 1,023 collisions in 2022, up from the 934 that took place in 2021. Deer crashes are far more likely in the fall months of October, November, and December, thanks to mating season as well as more hours of darkness. In these months in 2022, accidents involving deer were up to about 460 crashes, which equates to one collision every five hours. Mid-November, December is peak breeding season, so this is when deer are kind of not paying as much attention to what's going on around them other than males pursuing females. So this is when you really want to start paying attention to your driving habits and following the speed limits and 
you know, really observing what's going on and not looking at your cell phones. The deer aren't the only ones at risk in these crashes. According to AAA Insurance, the average claim for a deer collision is $4,000, and without insurance, drivers have to pay this out of pocket. Hitting a deer can also prove fatal. According to biologist Mike Conover, deer are responsible for 440 of the estimated 458 Americans killed by physical interactions with wildlife per year. AAA offers drivers a few tips to avoid accidents involving deer. Drivers should scan shoulder areas, especially at dusk or dawn when deer are most active, follow the speed limit, use a seatbelt, and use their horn to scare away wildlife from the road. Out of the 154 towns in Connecticut, Hamdo was ranked 14th in 2022 for the total number of deer collisions. Reporting from Quinnipiac, I'm Evangeline Crossley, Q30 News. Next Tuesday, the Student Government Association is hosting Talks on the Rocks from 6 to 8 p.m. This semester's topic is student well-being at QU. Students are invited to come up to York Hill and enjoy complimentary fall-themed dinner while talking to faculty and staff. This event is open to 50 students free of charge. Students can RSVP in a link sent to their email. And Maeve, that isn't the only Talks on the Rocks event the Student Government Association is hosting this semester. The university announced a special Talks on the Rocks for Saturday, November 4th at 11 a.m. The top topic will be life after QU in the workplace. It aims to discuss career preparations. Students can sign up using the link in their email. But be quick, only 50 students will be let in. The holiday season is almost here, and that means students will be packing up for break pretty soon. All residence halls will close at 6 p.m. Friday, November 17th, and they will reopen on Sunday, November 26th at 10 a.m. For those students who cannot go home, the university will be offering on-campus housing again this year. To get a spot, students must fill out the form on My Housing. Tomorrow at 4 p.m., the university will host a poetry reading with acclaimed poet John Murillo. Murillo is one of the leading voices in contemporary American poetry today. This event is free and open to the public and QU students. After this reading, he will offer questions and answer sessions to anyone in attendance. A Quinnipiac professor is joining the Connecticut Academy of Family Practitioners. The university announced last Thursday that Dr. Ku Ram Gumman was elected president of this organization. Dr. Gumman is currently an associate professor and family medicine clerkship director in the Quinnipiac School of Medicine. Connecticut Academy of Family Practitioners advocates for family physicians and patients in the local community. Big news came out of the White House today. The House Republicans nominated a new speaker after three tries over the past few weeks. Q30's Nick Boyd joins us now with political news from Washington, D.C. to even Georgia. Nick, what do you have for us? Thanks so much, guys. Here are the three big things you need to know in politics this week. In Washington, after over three weeks, the Speaker of the House saga has come to a close. Today, House Republicans elected Louisiana Representative Mike Johnson as the new Speaker of the House. The conservative congressman won the gavel by a 220 to 209 vote, as House Republicans were finally able to come together and agree on a candidate. Johnson was the fourth nominee the party had chosen since the ouster of Kevin McCarthy on October 3rd. Johnson and the House will now have to tackle a looming mid-November deadline to keep the government funded, along with other important legislation. Moving from D.C. to Manhattan, Senator Bob Menendez pleaded not guilty in federal court on Monday to charges that he acted as a foreign agent on behalf of Egypt. The New Jersey Democrat is accused of accepting bribes from Egyptian officials and giving the Egyptians sensitive information. Many fellow senators have called for Menendez to resign or for the Senate to hold a vote, a vote of expulsion. Pennsylvania Democrat John Fetterman said in a statement, quote, it is time for every one of my colleagues in the Senate to join me in expelling Senator Menendez, end quote. And lastly, keeping it in the courthouses, three former lawyers of President Donald Trump pled guilty to RICO charges in Georgia this week. Sidney Powell, Kenneth Chesbro, and Jenna Ellis were the latest defendants to agree to plea deals with Georgia District Attorney Fannie Wet Willis. The charges stem from Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in the state. Powell, Chesbro, and Ellis will all receive probation and have to pay fines as part of the plea deals. Trump and 14 other defendants pled not guilty to those same RICO charges. That's what you need to know in politics this week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Nick. We're about to take our second break of the night, but be sure to stick with us for a full weather forecast. I don't know about you, Vanessa, but I've got to know if the warm weather is going to be coming back. Me too, Maeve. I could really use some right now. Plus, after our break, we'll bring you all around the country with the latest national news. We'll be right back. 
What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back. It seems to get chillier every time we're in here. Am I right? I agree, but I'm most worried about how cold it will be on Halloween. That's right, and I'm expecting a lot of trick-or-treaters this year, so it's a good thing Q30's Keith Savage is here. Keith, how's the weather holding up? Thanks, guys. The weather is pretty solid the next few days. Tomorrow, like I said, it's going to be 73 sunny. But Saturday, that is the dream day right there. 78 and sunny. Well, I'm sorry, on Halloween. That Tuesday, it's going to be 53 and cloudy. Not the best day if you're a trick-or-treater over here. But overall, still a solid day for the week. Now, let's check out the weather tomorrow for Connecticut. Now, we look through over here. It's going to be a nice day all around the state. Mo mostly going to be in around the 70s, sunny. New London, New Haven, Danbury, a little cloudy at some. But overall, it's going to be a great day. And arguably, you could wear shorts that day and not get crazy looks. It's going to be a great day to do anything you want, to, especially in the beginning. Of course, getting colder at night. Overall, I gotta ask you guys, would you guys be wearing shorts tomorrow in the nice weather? You know, that's a great question, Keith. I have to say, I've seen a lot of Q30 people wearing shorts around here, but I don't think I can be one of those. What about you, Maeve? I'm gonna stick with my pants. I need to <laughs> stay warm. <laughs> Me too. Speaking of clothing, Quinnipiac's Department of Cultural and Global Engagement is seeking donations for their winter clothing drive. The department is asking students to donate clean and lightly used items such as winter hats, scarves, gloves, coats, and more. These donations will be given to international students to help them prepare for the winter season. Students can bring their donations to CCE 190 until October 30th. What a relief to hear that good weather is on our side. Here on campus, the Spanish National Honor Society is accepting applicants. Sigma Delta Pi is for any students who are taking Spanish classes. To apply, students must be at least a junior, must have a minimum 3.2 overall GPA and Spanish class GPA by the end of the fall semester. Students also need to have taken at least 18 Spanish credits at the 200 level or above by the end of the fall. If you're interested, you can email Professor Aileen Dever for an application. It is a way for, for us in the department and also nationally to recognize the hard work that Quinnipiac students are doing. Always feel free to, to email me, Professor Dever, if you think you might have six courses or you have any questions about the Honor Society. A new one credit course started on Monday. Learning Strategy Seminar is a seven week class that will run through December 16th. This course is taught by the Learning Commons staff and will teach students evidence-based learning strategies. It also will explore topics related to growth mindset. Outside of Quinnipiac, one university is getting backlash on a national scale after a controversial trivia question this past Saturday. Plus, see where an off-duty pilot is being charged with murder. And the United Auto Workers strike came to an agreement today. This national news Jackie is joining us in studio. Jackie, what do you have? Thank you, Maven Vanessa. A lot has happened across the country this week. On Monday, an off-duty Alaska Airlines pilot was charged with 83 counts of attempted murder, 83 counts of reckless endangerment, and a count of endangering an aircraft. 44-year-old Joseph David Emerson was arrested in Portland, Oregon after attempting to turn off the plane's engine. 
Flight 2059 took off from Everett, Washington and was bound for San Francisco. In audio released from the Blackhawks, the pilots and flight crew remained calm in order to subdue Emerson, who was seated in the jump seat. Emerson was hired by Horizon Air, a subsidiary of Alaska Airlines, in 2001, while also being employed by Alaska Airlines and Virgin Airlines. The FBI is currently investigating and also noted that there were no injuries reported. After a week of striking, the United Auto Workers strike amplified when 5,800 Stellantis employees walked off the largest automaker plant in suburban Detroit. The Stellantis Sterling Heights assembly plant is known for producing the Ram 1500 truck, which is one of the company's best-selling vehicles. Stellantis is also the parent company of Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep. The UAW now has more than 40,000 workers on strike between Ford, General Motors, and now Stellantis. Of the big three automakers in Detroit, Stellantis has the weakest contract offer and has failed to meet union demands with their latest offer. The company has also currently laid off about 1,520 employees across three states due to the strike. This new development in the strike suggests that the union and company leaders are not close to reaching an agreement. Before their football game against Michigan University, Michigan State University broadcasted a trivia question on their video stream about Adolf Hitler. The trivia question asked the crowd about Hitler's birthplace alongside a photo of him. The question was taken from the YouTube page The Clues Channel according to the Associated Press. The creator of the channel had no idea that Michigan State University was using his quizzes. He later wrote on the page. It is unclear how long the question was broadcasted for. Many officials at the university have spoken out against the question and its content while also mentioning that action has been taken so the incident does not happen again. That's all I have for national news today. I'm Jackie Drovo, back to you at the desk. We have, speaking of national news, we have breaking news coming in right now that we wanted to bring to you. The Maine State Police have ordered residents to, in Lewiston, Maine to shelter in place on Wednesday night due to an active shooter situation. The Lewiston Police Department posted on their Facebook page that there is an active shooter situation at a local bowling alley. We will have more details at the Q30 tv.com website stick with us for all of the updates and we will bring them right to you in the meantime we'll be right back after this short break i know what you're thinking i need a job i need a new career well i've been there i've been there i've been there i wasn't happy with what i was doing after high school i didn't have a plan i just wanted to start working i got laid off twice but you gotta keep going you just need the right skills find an apprenticeship i found a two-year it program i found a medical course online i'm now a consultant in the tech space you have more options than you think you can do this you will find something you will find something new Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. Why? Why? My... Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the last few minutes of tonight's Q30 newscast. Now that the fall semester is a bit underway, it's almost time for the Bobcat Challenge. Last year, families, students, and alumni came together to complete a record-breaking challenge in support of our 21 Division I teams. And this year, the big event will take place on October 25th and 26th. The university is urging students to get a head start. Here with us now is Q30's Maddie Kelly to tell us all about Quinnipiac sports. Maddie, I heard that some women's sports teams are having a great season so far. What can you tell us? Thanks, Maven Vanessa. Now let's get into sports. Starting in the arena, the women's ice hockey team began ECAC play on Friday. At the start of their successful weekend, the Bobcats overcame a 0-0 tie halfway through the third period in their game against Brown. Goalie Lo Logan Andres recorded 18 saves, making this victory the 15th shutout of her career. Moving on to Saturday, the Bobcats continued their winning streak after defeating the number five ranked Yale Bulldogs at home. The offense was fierce in the first period with the Bobcats scoring four times, including first year Kaylin LaMarche's first career goal. 
along with that, there were four other goal scorers for the Bobcats as they went on to win the Battle of Whitney Ave by a score of 6-3. to three. The Bobcats will travel to New York on Friday to face the number 6 Clarkson Golden Knights for their third ECAC game of the season and look to add to their winning streak. Moving from the arena to the turf, the women's soccer team not only celebrated their seniors on Saturday afternoon, but also continued to keep their undefeated streak in the MAC alive, keeping them at first in the league. Being back at home with an outstanding eight goals recorded for the Bobcats, it was clear these girls came out of the gates firing. Senior Emily Vandervlei recorded a hat trick, leaving the bob back of the net to be found by eight other Bobcats, including seniors Olivia Kudrako and Courtney Chokol and graduate student Lily Sh Schneiders. The Bobcats will travel to New York on Wednesday to face the Manhattan Jaspers for their final game before the MAC tournament, searching for an undefeated regular season. Sticking with fall sports, let's head on over to rugby. Like the women's soccer team, the rugby girls also celebrated their senior day in dominant fashion, cruising over the AIC Yellow Jackets with an 80-0 shutout over 12 tries. Eight different Bobcats reached the try zone on Saturday, including seniors Anna Van Dyke, Hannah Fersh, and Haley Crow. However, senior Kat Story led the offense with three tries for herself, highlighting the various weapons this team has. Not only that, but senior second row Anna Van Dyke recorded her 100th tackle, completing a very special milestone on a very special day. The Colorado native had her parents there watching, making this experience all the more memorable. The Bobcats will travel to Maryland on Saturday to face Mount St. Mary's in their final away game before the tournament. That's all I have for sports right now. I'm Maddie Kelly, and I'll send it back to the desk. Thanks, Maddie. And more exciting news, renovations on the Quinnipiac baseball fields have officially begun. Take a look here. Caution tape and construction vehicles are currently taking over the field. The renovations come during the team's off-season. Stick with us to see when the renovations are expected to be completed. How exciting for baseball! And speaking of our sports teams, the bookstore is offering students 75% off National Championship merch. That's right, the popular gray National Championship hoodie is now priced at $14.99 instead of the previous $62. Plus, a few more t-shirts and accessories are all on sale as well. To get this discount, students can visit the bookstore located in the Student Center on weekdays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., or visit the website. Looking to get into the Halloween spirit, Quinnipiac's Habitat for Humanity ran pumpkin painting today from 2.30 to 4.30 on the quad. Members of this club gathered to paint pumpkins for children who live in Habitat Humanity houses. The pumpkins will be donated in two days to the kids, just in time for Halloween. And the fun doesn't end there, Maeve. There are plenty of ways students can get into the Halloween spirit, including by visiting some of the local pumpkin patches. Q30's Olivia Cattell took a trip this weekend to see what kind of fun the patch is bringing to the local community this year. Take it away, Olivia. A hidden gem with a lot of history. Grassy Hill Farm is located just 20 minutes from campus and has been a community favorite for over 100 years. The farm stand is a hub for the area and provides locals with vegetables, including their famous corn, pumpkins, flowers, and a sense of community. We have regulars that come here. I, there's people that I've seen when I was here when I was 12 years old that are still coming. The farm is family run with tasks and responsibilities being fulfilled by its many members. I love it here. My mother used to work here um, when my aunt Margaret called me and was like, do you want to come do some hours at the farm? I was like, yeah, I'll come back. And even a member of the local community who ended up joining the family himself. I live close to here and I come every year uh, buy some plant and plant at home. Oh, I'm doing this for a lot of years. Manny has also been involved in farm life from a young age, but his journey started many miles away. With my grandfather, I'm doing this when I'm four years old. I woke up in Puerto Rico four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm doing this for a long time. I like it, yeah. That's why I'm here. The dedication and familial bond by all who help out at the farm are what keep it running and have made it the staple that it is. Every time Manny brings me vegetables every morning, he goes, look at this, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. He's so passionate about, you know, the work he does here. And I think everyone's kind of like that here. The stand will close for the season next week, but they still have plenty of pumpkins in time for Halloween. Reporting from Grassy Hill Farm, I'm Olivia Cattell, Q30 News. 
That was great. That pumpkin patch looked amazing, honestly. Thank you for showing those pumpkins, Olivia. We've got one right here on our desk tonight. It's a little bit small, but it's pretty cute. Yeah, I love it. I'm glad it could sit with us on the desk tonight. <laughs> Me too. And that will have to do it for tonight's Q30 newscast. Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to stick around for next week's show. To stay up to date on all of our content, follow us on social media at Q30 TV. Visit us on our website at Q30TV.com. And from the producers and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Maeve Campbell alongside Vanessa Blasi. Good night, Bobcats.